Hello viewers, my name is uh, Mr. Devanjo. Welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to be discussing extensively on NECO 2023 for the mathematics uh, theory questions. This is as a result of uh, the promise I made in the previous video where we solved the NECO 2023 for the mathematics objective questions. So I promise that we are going to be solving the theoretical part of this uh, 2023 NECO for the mathematics in the next video, which is this video. So if you have not watched that video, you may uh, refer to that video so that uh, you will, you will be uh, fully informed on everything that NECO has the student on in just concluded uh, 2023 for the mathematics NECO questions. So what are we going to be doing in this video? We are going to be telling you the topics where each of the questions uh, came from or where, they, or where they selected all the each of the question and also we are going to be solving each question step by step with proper explanation and also we are going to solve 15 questions in total in this video so this video is a very good video to help students uh, prepare for forthcoming examination in NECO and also to equip the student on the what and what is expected of them by the examin examination body so this video is a, a, a very sophisticated one and a lot and lot of explanation will be made in this video but before we get it started please if you are here to subscribe to this channel please click on the subscribe button right now so as to help us improve the channel you can also uh, share the video with students out there who need uh, this resource material for preparation for examination like the video and uh, comment on the comment section of this video so as to help us improve on our next video now the first question is what you are seeing on the screen right now and uh, the question is from a uh, set the question is from set we are given that let uh, you you or the inverse set be uh, be this and uh, we are told that uh, this is inverse set and uh, there, there is also a set x with this element and set y with this element so and uh, we are told that x set x and y are subset of set u so we have to draw the Venn diagram to represent the information we have to use the Venn diagram to find uh, s complement s union y complement s complement action y complement so this is the first question uh, they have this qu student which is from set so we are giving the inverse set to have this element e f g h i and set x to have element e and g and set y to have g and h so that means this is a, a this is going to give us a venn diagram of two subsets venn diagram of two subsets where x and y are the subset of the inverse set now what do you do draw your 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 rectangular box to represent the inverse set then the two circles here are to represent set x and set y and the reason why they are overlapping is because there is interaction between x and y which is element g so so G will be inside here. Then what else do we have in this uh, X only? That will be E. Because if you look at set X, after putting G here that belong, the, in interaction between X and Y, the only element we have X left in X is E. So it will be in this place. Also set Y as well. We have already picked G to be interaction between X and Y. Then we, the only element left here is H. So H, H will be here. Then then if you look at the inverse set, there are some elements in the inverse set that is not in X and Y. So I is not in X and Y. Then uh, F is not also in X and Y. So that means they will be inside the box, but outside the circles. So we have F, we have I. So they are also in, they are in the inverse set, but outside the the S union Y. So that's why they are outside the inside the box, but outside the circle. Then from there now we have to, after drawing this we have to find s complement s complement 
that should be where what are the x complement those element that is not in x that is not in set x but they are in the inverse set that is uh, x complement those element that is not in uh, that is not in a uh, set x but they are in inverse set that's the class component of set x so that means we have h we have i we have f so we have f i h as s complement we have to find x union y complement s union y is all the elements in x and y com combined together so that is e g h then complement of it should be the element that is not in this s union y but is they are in the inverse set and that should be f and i f and i then sorry that is uh, that's for this one f and i then also we have to find s complement interaction y complement s complement interaction y complement so what do that mean those element that is uh, not in x the element that is not in x and they are also in what in y as well and uh, both of them are in uh, uh, s complement and they are in y complement and that is a uh, f and high as well which is this element and this element so that is for question number one question number two is from uh, coordinate geometry question number two a is from coordinate geometry while question number two b is from uh, indices two a says that uh, if uh, we are to find the equation of the circle whose center is a uh, 4 comma minus 5 and passes through minus 3 comma 2 sorry pardon me for this non-coordinate geometry this is from uh, equation of circle rather question number two is from equation of circle not circle ge uh, not uh, coordinate geometry it's from equation of circle so we are given that this is the coordinate of the center of the circle and the circle passes through this point so if you draw the diagram you have to have this kind of a diagram where this point here is the center of the 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 center of the circle and that's the coordinate of the center of the circle and the line the circle also passes through this point this point which is minus three comma two we have to find the equation of this circle and uh, we know that the equation of the circle uh, is derived from the coordinate of the center of the circle and the radius of the circle but now we don't know the radius so that means you can find the radius of the circle which is talking about the distance between the center and this point that the circle passes through so from here to here is the radius so you can use that to find the radius of the circle and we know that when you are finding the distance between two points and that is a, a distance between two points giving the coordinate of the two points that is a coordinate geometry so that means you use um, the distance between two points is square root of a, a change in s square plus change in y square and uh, that we can regard as the radius of the circle then from there we have the square root of uh, s2 is minus 3 then minus s1 s1 is a uh, 4 then no square plus y2 is a uh, 2 minus y1 is minus 5 as well minus minus 5 all squared if you simplify this one give us minus 7 squared then minus times one here give us plus 2 plus 5 give us 7 then you have 7 square so that should give us 49 plus 49 and that should give us a square root of a uh, 98 so that is the radius of the circle now that we know the coordinate of the center and we know the radius we can use the the template of uh, equation of circle where we know the center and where you know the radius and that should be s minus a square plus y minus b square equals to r square where a and b are the coordinates of the uh, a and b are the coordinates of the center of the circle then from there we can substitute so our a is a 4 we have s minus 4 squared plus y and our b is minus 5 so we have minus minus 5 all squared equals to our radius is a sod 98 which is sod 98 squared then if you expand this bracket we have s square minus 8x minus uh, plus 16 then if you expand this bracket as well you'll be having y plus 5 squared y plus 5 squared if you expand that that should give us y squared plus 10y plus 25 equals to the square of the square root of 98 is a uh, 98 so from there you can take the light times so degree of two bring them together we have s square plus y squared minus 8x plus 10y then plus 16 plus 25 then bring 98 to this side minus 98 equals to zero 
then that will give us y s squared plus y squared minus 8 plus 10 y if we simplify this constant that should give us minus 57 equals to 0 so that means this is the equation of the circle that of with this center and that passes through this coordinates so number 2b is from uh, indices like i said we are given that uh, this s raised to power minus 2 over 3 divided by cube root of s square divided by 1 over s square all raised to power minus 3 you have to simplify this like i said it's from indices and if you understand your indices very well you will understand this and if you don't please refer to my video on indices so if you check my video in the video on my channel you see a topic on indices where we discuss extensively on indices so that will help you understand what we are going to do here very well so what are we doing here we can change this to s raised to power minus 2 over 3 this division sign you can change to division like this then this we can change to this is talking about the, the cube root of s square which is same thing as s raised to power 2 over 3 then divided by this is inverse of s square which can be written as s raised to power minus 2 then all raised to power minus 3 then you can see that this we can apply the, the law of indices to this since we are having uh this they have the same base and here we are having division so we can pick one of the base and subtract the power so we have s raised to power minus 2 over 3 then minus 2 over 3 again minus minus 2 all raised to power minus 3 then this now minus times minus will give us plus so you have uh, s raised to power minus 2 over 3 minus 2 over 3 plus 2 then we can find the SCM of the power here which should be 3 so you have s raised to power minus 2 minus okay that is 3 in 3 give us 1 then 1 times minus 2 give us minus 2 minus 3 in 3 also we give us 1 times 2 give us 2 then 1 in 3 will give us 3 times 2 then that give us 6 so so find the SCM of this you have this then raised to power minus 3 then from there if we simplify the minus 2 minus 2 plus c will give us a plus 2 so we have s raised to power 2 over 3 then raised to power minus 3 3 can go in 3 here because according to the law of indices this power can multiply themselves so 3 will go in 3 so we have s raised to power minus 2 left which is written as s raised to uh, 1 over s squared so that's the solution for question number number 2 question number 3 is from uh, vector vector we are given that vector s is equals to 2i minus 5j and vector y is 4i plus 3j we have to find the angle between them we have to find the unit vector in the direction of 5s plus 2 so like i said it's from vector how do we find the angle between two vectors that should be cos of the angle between them equals to the uh, the dot product of the two vectors divided by the uh, modulus of uh, each of the vectors then what does that mean we have cos theta equals to the first vector vector s is 2i minus 5j uh, dot vector G, uh, y is 4i plus 3j divided by the modulus of x uh, vector s is we have the square root of 2i squared plus minus 5j squared then the modulus of vector y is square root of 4i squared plus 3j squared as well then if you find the double product of the numerator we have 2y multiplied by 2y that gives us 8 then minus 5j times uh, 3j that should give us minus 15 divided by 2y squared will give us 4 then minus 5j squared will give us a uh, plus 25 also 4i squared will give us 16 then plus 3ij will give us a uh, 9 the 8 minus 15 will give us minus 7 divided by if you simplify this 49 square root of 49 give us 7 then 16 plus another give us 25 square root of 25 is 5 then uh, so if you simplify this one should give us a 226.926 then if we do that very well we should have a uh, if you divide this one by this one then we have a cos theta to be minus 0 0.25998 we are looking for theta because that's the angle between them and uh, that should give us cos inverse of minus 0 0.25598 and that should give us 105 degrees 
so the angle between vector x and vector y is uh, 105 degrees but please you may need to verify uh, this very well verify this square root of this times square root of this will it give you 26.926 so please verify this on your own so if it is not correct because i'm doubting it there could be a mistake there so verify that for yourself now uh 3b say you have to find the new vector of 5s minus 2 uh, plus 2 rather so 5s plus 5s plus 2 vector s is a uh, is given to us 2y minus 5j so we have 5 into 2y minus 5j plus 2 simplify that you have a uh, 5 times 2y will give us 10 i then 5 times uh, minus 5j will give us minus 25j plus 2 then this we now find the unit vector of this and how do you find the unit vector of a vector that will be the vector divided by its modulus so that means you have the vector divided by the modulus which is the square root of square of each uh, dimension of the vector so we have 2i and uh, 10i squared plus minus 25j squared plus 2 squared then that should give us the vector divided by 10i squared will give us 100 minus 25 squared will give us a 625 then 2 squared will give us 4 if you simplify it that should give us the square root of 729 and the square root of 729 is a 27 then that should give us 1 over 27 into 10 9 minus 25 j plus 2 so that's the unit vector of the vector of this uh, of the vector in this direction question number four is from uh, integration we have to use a uh, trapezium rule to solve this uh, to simplify this uh, integral uh, expression integral uh, from the limit of 5 to 2 2 s uh, plus 3 raised to power 2 dx giving the range of s from 2 to uh, 2 to 4.5 so you have to use uh, this is uh, the iteration method of solving uh, integration you have to use trapezium rule and how do we do that you need to forward tabulate your 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 uh, solution first you are giving your s from 2 to 4.5 which is this then from the integral function given to us we have two x so you have two x you have three you have three then you now have two x plus three all squared so your s is two if you put two here then you have four point zero your s is two point five here times two that gives us five your s is three times two six s is three point five times two that gives us seven point zero s is four times two that gives us eight point zero s is four point five times two nine point zero s is 5.0 times 2 that gives us 10 then 3 is a constant apply it to everyone then from there 2s plus 3 you have to add this together so this plus this you give us 7 then square it that gives us a 49 5 plus 3 is 8 square 64 6 plus 3 is uh, 9 square give us 81 3 plus 7 is 10 squared 100 8 plus 3 is uh, 11 squared 121 9 plus 3 is 12 squared of it 144 10 plus 3 is uh, 13 squared 169 then this is our 2s plus 3 is squared and that's what you have gotten then this can be written as a y1 uh, y2 y3 y4 to y7 then if you now use the the trapezium rule we say that the integral of the function we are looking for is equal to 1 over 2 multiplied by h where h is the the difference between this uh, value of x into bracket y1 plus the y7 the beginning and the end of the iteration added together plus 2 into bracket the the remaining iteration aside from the beginning and the end which is what you're having here then we have it to be 1 over 2 times the difference between all this uh, intervals is uh, 0 0.5 so you have times 0 0.5 into y1 is uh, 49 plus y7 is uh, 169 plus 2 into 64 plus 81 plus 100 plus 121 plus 144 that's what you're having here then if you simplify that further 49 plus 169 is uh, 218 then from there 
from there we have a 64 plus 81 plus 100 plus 121 plus 144 that should give us 510 then if we simplify this two times this will give us uh, two times 510 plus 218 will give us 1238 then if you multiply by half then divide it by two as well that should give us 309.5 as the the so uh, as the solution to this uh, question using trapezium rule now this should be give us in a uni uh, squared unit as the unit of this now the question number five is from uh, uh is from combination it's from combination and permutation out of 10 males and eight, uh, eight females staff in a school a committee is to be set up consisting of five men and eight women in how many ways can this be done in the first one any man and any woman can be included that means there's no restriction so 10 female you have to bring five female from that that should be 10 combination five multiplied by eight female out of uh, you have to bring three women out of eight females that should give you us uh, eight combination three and this is for question number a because there's no restriction uh, given that any man and any woman can be there so that means you have eight combination five times eight combination so ten combination five times eight combination three so ten combination five can be written as ten factorial over ten minus five factorial five factorial times eight combination three is eight factorial divided by eight minus three factorial three factorial then if you simplify this that gives us five factorial here 8 minus 3 is 5 factorial as well then from there 10 factorial is uh, 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial so that this can cancel one of these under then 8 factorial can be written as 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial so that it can cancel 5 factorial there so from there if you simplify this we have 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 divided by 5 factorial that should give us uh, 252 then this also should give us a uh, 56 if you simplify this because we are left with uh, 8 times 7 times 6 then divide by 3 factorial 5 factorial will take your 5 factorial here 3 factorial is 6, 6 can take your 6 8 times 7 give us 56 then if you multiply this by this you have uh, 14,112 ways of selecting uh, this uh, committee then the next step question is that uh, the if the principal a male must be on the committee that means there's a restriction so there is one person that must be in the committee as a male so that means the the males the male will be reduced by one since uh, there's somebody's already on the ground so that means you have 10 combination four instead of 10 combination five here you have 10 combination four to multiply by there's no restriction with female so you have eight combination three if you simplify this you have 10 factorial divided by 10 minus 4 factorial Four factorial you have already simplified this one from here we got 56 so we have 56 here so 10 minus 4 is 6 factorial 4 factorial if you expand 10 factorial we have 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 factorial so that this can take care of this down then if you divide this 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 divided by 4 factorial that should give us 110 then from there uh, multiply by 56 that should give us uh, 11,760 ways of selecting the committee if the principal must a male's principal must be there so that is the solution for question number five question number six is from statistics and uh, that is from a uh, measure of dispersion we are told that uh, the table below shows the distribution of mark obtained by 100 candidates in an examination and you're now giving this group data with a class interval so you have mark from 1 to 10 11 to 20 21 to 30 31 to 40 41 to 50 then the frequency 9 49 32 8 and 2 calculate correct to three significant figures the standard deviation of the distribution so like i said this you have to find the standard deviation and how do we do that we know that the standard deviation is a summation f into s minus s bar all squared over summation f where s bar is the mean so we need to find the mean before we now compute the standard deviation 
and how do we find the mean you can change this table to a vertical to like this so we have the interval which is mark and we have the frequency which is like this then to find mean which is s bar with that summation fx over summation f so technically we need our x and we are not giving anything like x in the table then that means we need to uh, compute the table for x and how do we find x that should be the midpoint of the interval this 1 plus 10 give us 11 divided by 2 5.5 11 plus 20 divided by 2 15.5 21 plus 30 divided by 2 25.5 and do that for the rest as well so we have our x we have our f so we need to find fx so f times s we have 49.5 that is 9 times 5.5 49.5 49 times 15.5 759.5 32 times uh, 25.5, 816. 8 times 35.5, 284. 2 times 45.5, 91. Then we have to find summation of FS. So sum FS together, that gives us 2000. Divided by summation F. Sum your F together, that should give us 100. Then the mean will be 2000 divided by 100, that gives us 20. That's the mean. Then to now compute standard deviation. We, are, we need to compute s minus x bar which is deviation s minus x bar so this is your x and this is your s bar 20 so x minus s bar so that will be 5.5 minus 20 that give us 14.5 then 15.5 minus 20 that should give us minus 4.5 25.5 minus 20 that should give us 5.5 35.5 minus 20 will give us a 15.5 45.5 minus 20 gives us 25.5 as well. Then from there, we need to square our deviation. S minus S bar squared. Square each of every each, each data we have a square, then you have this. Then frequency will multiply the deviation squared. So your frequency here will multiply this you have gotten here. So this column will multiply this column. 9 times 210.25 will give us this. 49, point, uh, 49 times 20.25 will give us this. 32 times uh, 30.25 will give us this and so on then what do you do we sum it summation of this you sum everything here together that gives us 7075 divided by summation half which is 100 if you sort slot in your results 7075 divided by 100 that should give us a 70.75 as our standard deviation but we also take it to take a significant figure that should give us uh, 70.8 to 3 significant figure. So that's question number 6. Question number 7 is from mathematical modeling. So we are to model, you are to work on this uh, transportation. You are told that uh, uh, you, are to, you are to work on this uh, northwest uh, corner to rule on transportation. So we are told that a company has three production facilities. P1, P2, P3 production facilities with, uh, with production capacity of 8, 10, 9, 8, 10 and 19 so units in hundreds per, per week of a production respectively the units are to be sheet for 4 warehouse A1, A2, A3 and A4 with requirements 6, 8, 8, 15 unit in hundreds per, un, uh, per week respectively the transportation cost in hundreds of naira is given in the table below so we have the uh, p1 p2 p3 and a1 a2 a3 a4 the demand is here and the capacity is here so we have to use using the north west corner rule for this transportation model we have to obtain the initial basis transportation plan calculate the total least cost now what you are doing here is uh, we are going to uh, prepare obtain the initial basic transportation plan for this table and how do we do that now what we need to do is to we have to sorry we have to use this north west corner rule north west corner rule now look at this how do we do that i recreated this table this table is what you are having here except this last thing here this last row and this column here is not part of the table so how do we 
using the not well corner rules now look at this p1 this row and this a1 this column now column a1 and row p1 you can see that the they intercept at this point they meet at this point now this call at this uh, uh, section or cell they meet at this cell 19 then we have to look at the the demand for the demand for a1 is 6 and the capacity for p1 is 8 so the capacity for p1 is 8 and the demand for a1 is 6 now from there between 6 and 8 which one is the least this one is the minimum 6 is the minimum so you write the 6 in this where this where this row and this column meet the meet here so you write this 6 here you can see the 6 is yes you can circle it at the top here then what do you do remove the 6 from this demand you give us 0 then remove this 6 from this capacity you have 2 left does that make any sense to you good so since this column the column here is now zero so that means you need to close this this column is closed you know you are not you don't have anything to do with this column again from year to year it's closed it does i don't i don't want to close it you should you can use your pencil to rule it out just one line since the col the demand here is zero so this column is closed so you close it down then we are left with this row and this column now so this row and this column is what we are working now on so now from there now if you look at this uh, the demand here is 8 right and the capacity here is 2 since you have already used this 8 before so the many capacity here is 2 are we there we have already used 8 this 8 with this column with this this 4 so when we remove this uh, 6 from 8 that will give us 2 so the new capacity now is 2 but for this column which we are using again this remaining row from year to year now so the new capacity is 2 and the column here the demand here is what 8 so between 2 and 8 which one is the is the minimum you can see that that 2, two is the, 2 is smaller than 8 so we pick 2 so you write the 2 you can see that this row and this column also they will meet at this point this row and this column they will meet at this point so you write the 2 which is the minimum here then remove two from two that give us zero then remove these two from this you know this eight demand that give us six so that means since this we're having zero here so you need to close this row again now you close this row so we don't have anything to do with this row so we are left with this column from year to year against this new row now so we are going to work with this this row this second row p2 and this uh new col this column because we have already closed this uh, row now since this you are having zero here so you are now using this column against this new row are we there good so now if you look at this uh, row again and this column they are meeting at this point a2 and if you look at the capacity capacity here is 10 and the demand here is uh, 6 do you understand the demand here is 6 so between 6 and and 10 which one is the the minimum six is minimum so you write six in where in this point where they meet they meet here so you write six then six minus six will give us zero then six minus ten will give us four are we there so that means this you know this column will be closed now because this you are having zero so you close this column again so we are left with this row and then new column are we there good so but this code this row now is now having new capacity which is four because you have removed six from ten that goes zero. so this this road now is now having a new new minimum capacity which is four so we are now using this row with this new column now since this code we have already closed this column are we there now this row and this column they are meeting at this point so and if you look at the capacity four and the the demand is eight which one is the minimum four is the minimum so you write four where they meet here then 4 minus 4 give us 0 8 minus 4 will give us 4 so that means you are closing this row again now because you're having 0 you close this row so that means you are using this uh, column from year from year to year against this new new row against this new row now i hope i'm clear against new row from year to, from year to year now what do you do again 
this row and this column they meet here also so once they meet here then between uh, 19 as the capacity and the 4 as the demand new demand now which one is the minimum 4 is the minimum so you write 4 here then 4 minus 4 will give us 0 19 minus 4 will give us 15 so that means this row will have new capacity now which is 15 and uh, this one is already 0 so you close this you close this column so you are left with this row from year to year and then you are left with this new column you are left with the, for this row and this column now that we are left with from here this column from here to here and this row from here to here i hope i'm communicating then for this row now the new capacity is 15 and the demand here is 15 as well so between 15 and 15 which one is the minimum 15 is the minimum so 15 minus 15 give us zero 15 minus 15 also give us zero here so you are closing this row you are closing this column so you have nothing left again so this is the but this is the the initial basic transposition plan you have to obtain so this is the chart then you have to calculate the total cost total total list cost total list cost is the uh, this value c is here multiplied by the number in the cell which is 19 plus 30 times 20, 30 plus 6 times 30 plus 4 times 40 plus uh, 7 times uh, 4 times 70 plus 15 times 20 so that's what you're having here and if you simplify this you have 114 2 times 30 is 60 6 times 30 is 180 4 times 40 is 160 4 times 70 is uh, 280 15 times 20 is 300 if you add this together that should give us 10,000 so that's the solution for question number 8 Question number 9a is from the equation of circle and the, the same thing with equation number 9b. Question number 9a, you have to find the center and the radius of the circle 3x squared plus 3x squared, uh, 3y squared plus 12x minus 6y minus 45 equals 0. So you have to find the, say, the center, the coordinate of the center and the radius of this equation of the circle. So how do we do that? 3 is common to everything here. You can divide through by 3. So we have x squared plus y squared plus 4x. Uh, okay. Uh, plus 4x. 3 in minus 6y give us minus 2y. 3 in minus 45 and you give us a minus 15 equal to 0. Then you can now rearrange x squared plus 4x then plus y squared minus 2y equals to take the constant of this side. You have a 15 then s squared plus 4s is, is a quadratic expression so you can complete that squares likewise y square minus 2y is also a quadratic expression so you can complete that square as well so like i said complete the squares then how do we complete the squares here so the question of s here is for divide it uh, half it then square it so if you half it that will be 2 then square it that will be 4 so you're having s squared plus 4x then plus what you get 4 also, this um, complete the square of this one as well. The equation of y is uh, minus 2 divided by two, half it, that gives us minus 1, then square that gives us 1 plus 1. So that's what you have here plus 1. And then this and this should be added to the both side as to the other side as well. 4 plus 1 as well. So we have completed both sides, you have completed the squares here now. Then this can be changed to a perfect square. S squared plus 4, s plus 4 can be changed to a perfect squared. That should give you s plus 2 squared. Then y squared minus 2, y plus 1 also can be changed to a power squared. That should give us y minus 1, y minus 1 all squared. Then we simplify this, it should give us 20. Then from there, if you remember the equation, of, you can call this one equation 1. But if you remember the equation of the circle, give it the, the center to be a comma b and the arrow to be the radius. You have it to be s minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals to r squared. So we can compare this equation 1 and equation 2 now to get our a to get our b so if you compare 1 and 2 you have a to b minus 2 your b to be 1 your radius will be square root of 20 that gives us 2 sort 5 units so therefore the center will be uh, minus 2 which is for a comma 1 which is for b the radius is 2 sort 2 sort 5 units so this is the center of the circle and this is the radius of the circle then question number B, you have to find the equation of the tangent to the circle. 
in uh, relation of the tangent to this circle a to this circle given to us here uh, at 2 comma 3 and the value of theta in the parametric coordinate of the point 2 comma 3 so we are looking for equation of a tangent so equation of tangent to this circle at this point 2 comma 3 now there are ways of doing the there are ways of achieving this uh, equation of tangents there are ways but if you understand the application of a uh, differentiation to to uh what's it called to circle we can use that uh, to solve this although there's a native method of finding the equation of tangent under uh, the topic of equation of circle there is a native way of the answers to find equation of a tangent but i must tell you that uh, that could be a little bit confusing but if you understand the position very well you can use that to to solve this how do we do that we have to find equation of a tangent to this circle but we know that the equation of a tangent a tangent is a straight line a tangent is a, well, it's a straight line that should mean that means you give us a straight line equation a tangent is a straight line so that means you give us uh, equation of a straight line as our answer so but we are told that that tangent is uh, is is a tangent to the this circle at this point two comma three so that means at the point of tangential you can find the gradient of the circle talk at the point of uh, at the point of we have up it at the point of uh, tangential we can find sorry for that at the point of tangential we can find the gradient of this of this circle at the point of tangential we can find the red, uh, gradient of this uh, circle and uh, how do we do that of course we know that uh, if you divide through by three years just like we did here we have a s square plus who uh, y square plus 4 s minus 2 y equals uh, minus 15 equals to 0 so if you differentiate this function of this circle then that means you are trying to find the gradient of the circle and how do we differentiate this this is a, an implicit function it's an implicit function so if you differentiate this if you differentiate s square you have two x if you differentiate y square that should give us two y d y d s because this is a dependent variable y s is independent variable that's why it's not attracting any any dy dx so to y so if you differentiate s square we have a two x plus differentiate y square you have two y dy ds differentiate four that should give us plus four if you differentiate uh, minus two that should give us minus two dy ds and if you differentiate a constant that gives us zero equals to zero then from there you can collect light times 2s and 4 we go to this side we have a 2y dy ds minus 2 dy ds equals to minus 2s minus 4 so you can factorize dy ds here because it's common so you add dy ds into 2y minus 2 equals to minus 2s minus 4 then you cannot divide both sides by 2y minus 2 to get dy dx so our dy ds will be minus 2x plus uh, minus minus 2x minus 4 over 2y minus 2 then 2 is common to up and down you can divide through by 2 or factorize 2 here and factorize 2 here and the 2 cancel out so you have a dy ds to be minus s minus 2 over y minus 1 so from there this is the gradient of this circle the gradient of this circle which is the y dx is equal to minus s minus 2 over y minus 1 so we can now find the gradient of this of the tangent at that where the, at the uh, gradient of the tangent at the at the at this uh, gradient of the tangent as the at 2 comma 3 so we can find the gradient of the tangent at 2 comma 3 which is the gradient of the circle as well at 2 comma 3 so that will be m is equals to the y ds which is what you're having here equals to minus s minus over y minus y minus one our s is two our y is three so substitute that here we have a minus two minus two divided by three minus one and that's give us minus four over two and that should give us a minus two it means that the gradient of the circle at that point we say the same gra gradient of the of the of the tangent also at the point will be what minus two so that means you know the gradient of the of the tangent which is a straight line and uh, we know that the uh, equation of a straight line is a uh, or the template of equation of a straight line is y is equal to ms plus c 
when our m is the gradient so the gradient of the circle uh, of the time is minus two so you put that here so i mean you have y equals to two, minus two x plus c so then all you need to do is to find this c which is the uh y intercept where the tangent intercept the y axis and that can be gotten also at the point of the tangent which is two comma three at that point your your y uh, s is two your s is uh, y is three so put that here so we have three equals to minus 2 s is 2 multiplied by 2 plus c so minus 4 take to this side you have a uh, c to because of 3 plus 4 that was 7 if you return this constant back here so we have your y to be equals to minus 2 s plus 7 so this is the equation of the tangent we also find at the point of the tangent to this circle so we have y equals to minus 2 s plus 7 Question number 10. Question number 10. Question number 10 is on uh, 10A. It says that C is from a, a partial fraction. Question number 10 is from partial fraction. We have to resolve 2S key plus 5S squared minus 6S plus 4 divided by S minus 1 into S plus 2 into partial fraction. How do we do that? Of course, we know that uh, in partial fraction, uh the degree of the denominator must be must be less uh so the most the degree of the denominator must not be greater than the degree of the denominator but the degree of the denominator is, is the, the highest degree is three and if you expand the denominator you have the highest degree to be square because it's a quadratic expression but the the rule says that the degree of the numerator must be less than the degree of the denominator if you want to apply solve this partially so what do you do for that? You need to forward divide this by this. Then your remainder is what we now work with. And that's what you have done here. First of all, open the bracket of the denominator. You have a quadratic expression here, s squared plus two, s squared plus s minus two. Then this will now divide this using division of in polynomial. So we have the division like this. Then you have the, the dividend is two s cubed plus five s squared minus six s plus four divided by this uh, this device so s squared plus s minus 2 then s squared in 2s cube s squared in 2s cube that should give us 2x then 2x times s squared will give us 2s cube 2s times s will give us a uh, 2s squared plus 2s squared 2s times minus 2 will give us a minus 4 then you subtract this from this so you introduce your minus here so this one become minus 2s cube minus 2s cube will give us 0. This also become minus because minus times plus will give us minus. 5s squared minus 2s squared will give us a 3s squared. Minus times minus here will give us a plus. So you have having minus 6s plus 4s that will give us a minus 2x. Do you understand that? Bring your constant 4 down. You have a 3s squared minus 2s plus 4. So s squared can still go in 3s squared. That should give us a plus 3. So 3 times s squared will give us a 3s squared. 3 times x will give us 3x. 3 times minus 2 will give us minus 6. Then subtract as well. What do we have? We have 3s squared minus 3s. That gives us 0. Minus 2s minus 3s will give us minus 5x. 6 plus 10. Uh, six, uh, 4 plus 6 rather will give us 10. So s squared cannot go in 5s. It's not possible. So that means this is the remainder. So this is the remainder. Therefore, this can be written as now that uh, uh, this 2s cube plus 5s squared minus 6s plus 4 over s plus minus 1 s plus 2 can be written as uh, the quotient is 2s plus 3, which is 2s plus 3. Then plus the remainder is minus 5s plus 10, which is plus the remainder divided by the divisor, so which is this one, s squared plus s minus 2. So we are now to resolve this fraction now this one using uh, we are not we are now to resolve this one partially now we already got in an answer which is 2s plus 3 this one is already solved so we need to resolve this fraction partially and you can see that uh, the degree of the denominator is greater than that of numerator this is a linear expression this is a quadratic expression so we are now to resolve this partially now so we have uh, we have to resolve that we have minus 5s plus 10 over s minus 1 into s plus 2 so the, the the denominator is in a quadratic so you have a, so you split down to be a over the denominator plus b over the second denominator 
then here you find the lcm of the denominator here so you have s1 s minus 1 s plus, s plus 2 s minus s plus 1 uh sorry there's an error here okay this is s minus 1 not s plus 1 this is s minus 1 here s minus 1 in this fraction we have s plus 2 left s plus 2 times a will give us a into s plus 2 plus s plus 2 in this we have s minus 1 left times b we have b into s minus 1 then from there the fraction the denominator here will cancel the denominator here you are left with minus 10 plus 10 equals to a into s plus 2 plus b into s minus 1 then all you need to do is to find your a and b so how can we find a how can we find a so all you need to do is to make b zero how can we make b zero here if s is one then this will this one becomes zero so when your s is one you have your minus five times one plus ten equals to this one is already zero then you put your one here you have three uh, one plus two is three times a will give us three a so from there what do we do minus five plus ten is five then to get your a divide both side by three a will be five over three also to get your b all you need to make your a your s here to be what minus two if s is minus two here this one becomes zero so that means you'll be having minus five times two give us minus ten plus ten that give us zero sorry pardon me for that s is minus two so you have minus five times minus two that give us a plus ten so you have plus ten plus ten equals to this one become minus two plus zero two give us zero so you're having minus two minus one here that give us a minus three so we have been uh, 20 is equals to minus 3b divide both side by minus 3 that means b, b will be equals to minus 20 over 3 then if you return that back here you know your a to be 5 over 3 so you'll be having 2x plus 3 plus a is uh, 5 over 3 you have 5 over 3 into s uh, minus 1 not plus 1 x minus 1 then your b is a uh, minus 20 over 3 so return your b here you have a uh, minus 20 over 3 into s plus 2 so if you resolve this fra uh, fraction partially you have a uh, 2s plus 3 plus 5 over 3 into s minus 1 minus 20 over 3 into s plus 2 question number 10b is from a uh, bin diagram or set you can say set now so which can be solved using being diagram method you are told that in a junior secondary school CC students play table tennis or basketball so the number of students that play table tennis is seven more than three uh, thrice the number of students that play basket but if three students play both games and every student play at least one game how many students play table tennis so like I said it's from a uh, diagram of set now how do we do this you are having two sets okay you have universe set of 60 students so you have a 60 and also we are giving two uh, set table tennis and the basket uh, ball c is for table tennis b is for basketball so we are giving a word problem here that uh, the student that play tennis is seven more than thrice the number that that play uh, basketball Hmm. let's look at the question now let's see it again this number that play table tennis is seven more than three times the number that play basketball hmm. okay that means if you know the number of people that play basketball let's call it x people that play basketball let's call it x then people that play table tennis will be seven more than thrice of this that will be seven plus three x hmm do we understand that now so people that play basketball let's call it x then people that play table tennis will be seven more than seven more than uh, that is seven plus three or the uh, thrice of people that play basketball so we have seven plus three x that play table tennis and we are told that three play both games so that means you have three here do we understand that so three play both games so we need to get people that play basketball only that will be this people that play with um, basketball which is x minus people that play ball which is x minus three 
we need to get we would have played table tennis only as well that should be seven plus three and we could have played table tennis minus people that play both minus three as well do we understand this very well so then the union of this, this plus this plus this should give us what the inverse set so we have 60 equals to 7 plus 3 s minus 3 which is people that play table tennis only plus people that played it both plus people that played basketball only s minus 3 then if you simplify that further we have 60 equals to 7 minus 3 uh, uh, sorry uh, we have uh, 3s plus s that gives us 4x minus 3 plus 3 gives us 0 7 minus 3 gives us 4 then from there we can collect like times we have 4s equals to 60 minus uh, 4 minus 4 and that should give us 56 divide both side by 4 s will be 14 so that means s is 14 and people that play basketball are 14 numbers but also also so far many people that play table tennis so people that play table tennis are 7 plus 3x so that should be what 7 plus 3 times 14 that should give us 49 so 49 people play uh table tennis so that's solution for question number 10b question number 10 is from the binary op operation it's from binary operation we are told that uh, an operation asterisk on the set of real number is defined by p asterisk q equals to 3p plus 3q minus 5 over 3 for all p comma q belongs to real number find the identity elements so p asterisk q is the uh, 3p plus 3q minus 5 over 3 so if you pick uh, element p aesthetic its identity should give us the element p so that's the rule for identity finding identity element so p aesthetic identity element we, which is e should give us p and if you put this one into this rule so that means your p is p your q will be what e so you have 3p plus 3e then minus 5 over 3 equals to p from there you can cross multiply we have 3p plus 3 minus 5 equals to 3p so 3p will cancel 3p at both sides because we collect light times that will give us 0 so we are left with a 3e then take this 5 minus 5 to the other side we have 5 divide both sides by e and so by 3 you have e to be equal to 5 over 3 it means the identity element is 5 over 3 for that question number 10c question number 11 is from 11a is from uh, uh, is from a uh, algebraic uh, fraction it's from algebraic fraction we have to solve this algebraic fraction 1 over s plus 1 plus 2 over s minus 1 equals 1 over s plus 3 so how do we solve that of course we can find the LCM of s plus 1 s minus 1 and that should give us this s plus 1 in, uh, in this will give us s minus 1 times 1 s minus 1 plus s minus 1 in this that gives us s plus 1 times 2 we have this equals 1 over s plus 3 then from there uh you can open the numerator open the bracket here you have s minus 1 2 multiplied by will give us 2s 2 times 1 will give us a 2 then this denominator is a difference of two squares that means you can write this as s square minus 1 if you open the bracket you have this that's what i mean by that then equals 1 over s plus 3 simplify the numerator s plus 2 will give us 3x minus 1 plus 2 give us a 1 over s square minus 1 if you cross multiply from there 3s plus 1 will multiply s plus 3 we have this then 1 will multiply s square minus 1 we have this then from there if you open this bracket we have 3s times s will give us 3s square 3s times 3 will give us a 9x 1 times s will give us x 1 times 3 will give us 3 equals to s square minus 1 collect like times 3s this one will go here we have 3s square minus s square will give us 2s squared 9s plus l give us 10x Ma minus 1 come here you have 3 plus 1 that give us 4 equals to 0 we are now to solve this quadratic equation using the method that we know of course this cannot be solved using factorization method so that's why we use a formula method here also you can also use a complete the square method so because our variable here is x you have x to be equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac over 2a our b is the 10 so if you put that you have minus 10 plus or minus square root of b square is 10 square minus 4 times our a is a 2 times 2 
our c is uh, 4 times 4 over 2 times a is uh, 2 2 times 2 then you have minus 10 plus or minus 10 squared is a uh, 100 then 4 times 2 times 4 is a uh, 32 you have 100 minus 32 over 4 then from the square root of minus 10 plus or minus 10 minus 100 minus 32 give us 68 over over 4 then minus 10 plus or minus square root of 68 is a uh, 8.24 approximately divided by 4 which you know what this one implies means this is a uh, s equals to minus 10 plus 8.24 over 4 or minus 10 minus 8.24 over 4 if you simplify it that should give us minus 0 0.44 or 4 minus 4.56 as the value of our x question number 10 b is from the polynomial we have to find the quotient and the remainder when this dividend is divided by this divisor so we have to s to power 4 minus 9 s cubed minus 21 s squared plus 88 x plus 48 is divided by s minus 2 of course there is a short method of dividing uh, of finding the remainder if you have to find only remainder you can use the short score we can use the remainder theorem but we also find quotient as well that means you need to use the long method and how do we do that you have a division like this then this is the the dividend and this is the divisor so what do we do s into s raised to power 4 that should give us 2s raised to power 3 then 2s raised to power 3 times s will give us a 2s raised to power 4 2s raised to power 3 times minus 2 that should give us a minus 4 s uh, minus 4 s raised to power 3 then what do you do you subtract so we have this minus d that give us 0 uh, minus 9 s cube minus minus 4 s cube that should give us a minus 5 s cube so because this one will turn to plus then bring this one down you have minus 5 s cube minus 21 s squared x in a minus 5 s cube that should give us minus 5 s squared then minus 5 s squared times s will give us a minus 5 s cube minus 5 s squared times a minus 2 will give us a plus 10 s squared subtract again this will give us 0 this one become minus minus 21 s squared minus 10 s squared that should give us a minus 31 s squared bring this down we have plus 88 x x in minus 31 s squared that should give us minus 31 x now there's one x times x that should give us a uh where are we minus 31 s squared the amount is one s times a minus two that should give us a plus uh, 62 x subtract as well this one will give us zero this one become minus 62 x 88 x minus 62 that should give us a 26 x also bring down the constant plus 48 x in 26 x that should give us plus 26 26 times x that gives us 26 x 26 times minus 2 give us a minus 52 then subtract as well this one give us 0 this one become plus 48 plus 52 give us 100 so it means that the quotient is a 2s cube minus 5x minus 21x plus 26 and the remainder is a 100 so that's solution for question number 11b Question number 11c is from polynomial as well. We are giving this p of x to find 3p of 3p of 2. And how do we do that? All you need to do is to follow for uh, open uh, multiply this polynomial by 3. Then when you now do that, you now find p of 2. So that is in this. So our p of x is this. Then you follow find 3p of x. So 3 will multiply everything here. You have 3s raised to the power 5. Then 3 times 5 will give us 15. 3 times 9 will give us 27. 3 times 11 will give us 33. 3 times 12 will give us 36. 3 times 13 will give us 39. You can now find 3p of 2. That means whatever you see here, you put your 2. So you have e to be 3 into 2 raised to the power 5 plus 5 into 2 raised to the power 4 plus 2 into 7 into 3 raised to the power 3. 33 into 2 raised to the power 2. 36 into 2 plus 39. 2 raised to the power 5 is uh, 32 times 3, that gives us 96. 16 times 5, 15 will give us 240. 8 times 27, 216. 4 times 33 will give us 132. 2 times 72 is 72. 2 times 36 is 72 plus 9, 39. 
and that should give us 795. So that is all about the question number 11 as well. Question number 12 is from Vector. Question number 12 is from Vector. Sorry for that. So our 12 is from Vector. We are giving that uh, the Vector OX, OY and OZ are represented by P, Q, R respectively where P is a colon vector then 1 and Q is a colon vector minus 2, 7 comma R is equal to P plus T, Q and O is the origin vector OZ and vector XY intercept at K where OK is equal to alpha alpha multiplied by the vector OZ and X, SK is equal to beta multiplied by vector XY and X alpha and beta are constant you have to find the equation of the line X vector XY and the vector YZ values of the constant alpha and beta const coordinate of the point K is a very uh, very uh, wonderful question on vector now before you can get this done you need to first sketch the diagram to represent this vector if truly you want to be able to solve the question and how do we do that we are told that o is the origin so if o is the origin i can i can draw vector o x from o to x represented by a straight line so then i can draw o y as well o y a straight line from here to here o y so from o to y that's why the arrow is going this way from o to z arrow is going to this way as well then we have o um we have uh if you are having uh, o x we have o y then you can join this together to give us uh, x y so that will give us a triangle are we there so also we have a uh, o z so from o to an a straight line to go to z so we are draw a straight line from here to give us to z here then we also have a vector x y okay which is this one as well then if it there is o z that means there will be uh x z you join you have already drawn a line from o to z so you can join x to z and the y to z as well so you'll be having this kind of a diagram and we have been told that uh, o z and uh, x y where is x y x y they intercept at k which is for this point here which is k here and uh, we are told that uh, this o z is represented by p so this vector o z is represented by p and z uh, vector o y is represented by q and the uh, vector o z the one at the center is represented by the r so we have r here for the center the o z so from there you have to find the <coughs> you have to find the uh, equation of vector of the equation of the line x y which is the, this x y from here to the from this direction from x to y here how do we do that we can get that from the triangle o x y so we using the uh, triangular law of vector we can get a uh, equation of a uh, vector line x x y so from triangle o x y which is what you have in front of triangle x y we know that vector o x from o to x is same thing as a o y plus x y sorry y x rather o x is equal from year to year is same thing as a from year to y from o to y plus from y to x that's what you have in here so from there what can we do our aim is to find x y not y x so we have y x here so we can we are looking for x y so that we can change the direction of the vector from y to x back to x to y and that means the sign will change so that means you'll be having minus then x to y so from there now you can now make the x y sort of the formula so it means x y sort of the formula you'll be having x y you can take it to this side so this one go here so you'll be having vector x y equals to o y minus o x which is the same thing as uh, our our o y from o y is a q and our o x is p and we have been given the the vector column vector for p and q 
which is a minus two seven minus p is a ten one if you understand the uh you can subtract this using the understanding of uh, matrices so that means you have minus two minus ten that gives us a uh, minus twelve seven minus one gives us six so that means the equation of a uh, vector uh s y is a uh, minus six and uh, minus twelve and six then we are still looking for that of y z so but how do we get y z you have been given other things you can use from the question we are told that uh, uh vector s k where is s k vector s k same as uh, three sorry is equal to beta multiplied by x y we already have our vector s y here so we can find s k vector s k is going to be beta multiplied by s y which means that a beta multiplied by this column vector minus 12 6 that gives us a minus 12 beta divide, uh, and uh, 6 beta then also we are told that uh, uh, our oz vector sorry we are not told our vector oz which is from here to here is our r vector oz is r so oz is r and we are told that r is p plus 3q r is equal to p plus 3q so and our p vector p is a 10 uh, is a coulomb vector 10 1 plus 3 multiplied by the q which is minus 2 7 we have this so if you do that 3 will multiply this coulomb vector we have uh, uh, this 10 1 plus 3 times minus 2 give us minus 6 3 times 7 give us 21 if you add this together 10 minus 6 will give us 4 1 plus 21 give us 22 so vector oz is 422 now from there we are now told that uh, our ok vector ok is equal to alpha o, o, alpha multiplied by vector oz so ok is equal to alpha multiplying vector oz and we already know our vector oz to be this so ok will be alpha into 422 and that's you alpha multiply this column vector you have 4 alpha 22 alpha so from there you can go to triangle form triangle o y z o y z o y z this triangle this triangle now we can use that triangle now from triangle o y z using the triangular rule of a uh, vector we can say that uh, o z is something as a uh, o y plus y z from o z vector o z is something as vector o y plus uh, y z from there our aim is to find y z from year to year then we can make y z solve the formula that will be y z will be equal to o z minus o y and we now have our uh our o y our o y is a q and our o z is our r so o z is r our o y is q and we have already gotten our r to be for this column vector 422 minus q is a Q vector Q is a, a minus two seven. What you are having here, when if you subtract it, that gives us four minus minus two, that gives us six. Twenty two minus seven gives us fifteen. Now we know that vector Y Z as well. Also, okay, we already got in X Y. We already got in Y Z. So that is it. Now we have to find the values of uh, constant alpha and beta. So we need to get our alpha and beta that we can get from triangle O X K triangle O S then K triangle O S K this triangle here we want to get our alpha and beta from there so from triangle O S K we know that uh, O X is same thing as uh, O K plus K X our O Z O X is same thing as O K plus k x that is a triangular rule of vector so also from there we know our so we know sk not kx so that we can change the direction of this uh, vector uh, kx to sk so that should be that will give us a uh, ok minus sk we have changed the direction of this vector so we now have having minus sk instead of plus here so we have our vector OX. Our vector OX is a. 
where is it our os is uh from here to here which is p OS is from here to here which is p so that it should be p is a 10 this column vector 10 1 equals to our ok our vector ok is uh, this vector in terms of our alpha then minus our s vector sk is uh, this sorry for that sk is this in terms of beta minus 12 beta then 6 beta so if you open the bracket we have a uh, 4 alpha minus minus 12 beta that should give us 4 alpha plus 12 beta 32 alpha minus 6 beta that goes 22 alpha minus 6 beta then this column matrix is equal to this column matrix uh, sorry column vector is equal to this column vector so then we have 10 is equal to this so we have 4 alpha plus 12 beta equals to 10 2 is common to everything you can divide through by 2 so we have 2 alpha plus 6 beta equals to 5 you can go down equation 1 also this one here is equals to 22 alpha minus 6 beta so we have 22 alpha minus 6 beta equals to 1 you can also equation 1 and 2 simultaneously now by adding the two equations because this is 2 6 alpha 6 beta minus 6 beta we can add this that should give us a 24 alpha this one give us 0 then it's 5 plus 1 give us 6 you can divide both sides by 24 so we have alpha to be 6 over 24 that give us 1 over 4 then to get our beta now so we have gotten the constant alpha to be 1 over 4 to not get our beta now we can substitute the value of alpha into any equation 1 or 2 to get our our beta so put alpha into equation 1 so wherever you see alpha in equation 1 you put 1 over 4 so it means you have a 2 into 1 over 4 plus 6 our beta minus 5 uh, sorry equals to 5 rather from there you'll be having this sorry for that you can uh, take this one to the other okay, or two year two year one two in four give us one over two then make a uh, six beta sorry to the formula we have six beta equals to five minus one over two so you're having five minus one over two find the lcm you have a two one in two is two times five give us ten minus one over two equals to nine over two then you cannot divide both sides by six to find our beta then from there we'll be having beta equals to 9 over 2 divided by 6 which can be written as the 9 over 2 times 1 over 6 then uh, 3 can go in uh, 2 so 3 can go in 6 3 3 years 2 sorry 3 year 3 as well so we have 3 over 2 times 2 here equals us 4 so we have 3 over 4 as our beta so our beta is 3 over 4 now the last question there says that uh, we are to find the coordinate of the point k coordinate of point k we know that our vector ok to be alpha multiplied by oz which seems as say uh, 4 alpha 22 alpha now that we know the value of our alpha to be 1 over 4 we can do go back there and substitute that so our vector ok is a uh, 4 alpha 22 alpha uh, alpha is 1 over 4, put that here, we have 4 times 1 over 4, 22 times 1 over 4 that should give us a uh, 4 in 4 give us 1, so we have 1 over 2 can go into in 4, 2, 2 in uh, 22, 11, so we have 11 over 2 which can be written as a 1, then 5.5 then this vector now you can actually change to a coordinate that should give us k equals to 1,5.5 so that's the solution for that question and it's very very interesting question number 13 is from the uh, mechanics and uh, that's the motion on uh, is one motion and here you have to work on the velocity time graph you are told that uh, a car starts from a town A and accelerates uniformly for four minutes before it reaches a speed of 35 meters per second which is maintained for 30 minutes and then retard uniformly for 3 minutes to stop at town B. We have to calculate the distance between A and B in kilometers. In kilometers. Then we have to find average speed of the car. Then we have to find the acceleration and retardation. Then we have to find the time taken to reach C, which is half 
way between A and B. Now, like I said, the question is from the velocity time graph. And uh, you need to draw the diagram before you can uh, solve this. A caster from town A. So you forward draw your axis, the vertical axis to represent uh, the velocity against the time. We call it velocity time graph. So V in meter per seconds, then horizontal <coughs> horizontal axis is a uh, time in seconds. <coughs> now, uh, it it cast out from A. So it's accelerated from A straight line. You have a straight line here. So and that's why you have in A here because it's accelerated from A up until uh, uh, accelerates uniformly for four minutes so when it gets here this is the time is here uh, four minutes so this four m means four minutes you are having here uh, four minutes not four meters then and uh, <coughs> before it reaches a speed of 35 meters per second so at this point the the, the speed is 35 meters per second at this point so that's why we trace that to, to this uh, uh, vertical axis which is velocity so velocity is a uh, 35 meter per seconds there now we are now told that uh, which which he maintain for 30 minutes so he move use this velocity and move for another 30 minutes so 30 plus 4 will give us 34 so you move from here to this and attain another uh, for 34 uh, for 30 minutes so 30 plus 4 will give us 34 so that means you'll be having 34 minutes here and then retire uniformly for 30 minutes to stop at B. So it started it restart, it started decelerating for another four min another three minutes rather. So three plus thirty-four will give us thirty-seven minutes. So and stop at point B here. So from there, that mean uh all this thirty-four year you're having here is a uh, thirty-four minutes, thirty-seven M here means thirty-four minutes. And uh, we have to calculate the distance from A to and B. So we have to calculate the distance in the car cover from A to point B. And that should be the area of this uh, uh, trapezium. So the area of the trapezium will give us the distance cover by the car from A to B. <laughs> and we know that uh, the area of a trapezium is the half multiplied by the the addition of the two parallel sides multiplied by the height of the parallelogram or the trapezium rather so that will be half into bracket a, a to b a b from year to year which is the side parallel side plus g to d from year to year as well multiplied by the height which is uh, uh, from year to year or from year to year so so that's all from year to year as well anyone now how do we do that of course a b from year to year is 34 37 uh, minutes so you have 37 minutes plus from year to year is a uh, 30 because from year to year is 4 and uh, from year to year is a uh, 30 as you have been told so from year to year is 30 so we have 30 meters 30 minutes rather so if you change uh, 37 minutes to seconds, that should give us 2,220 seconds. If you change 30 minutes to, to seconds as well, that will give us 1,800 because 30 seconds make one minute. So if you uh, if you multiply uh, 37 by 60, that should give us a uh, 2,220. Uh, then 30 times 60 will give us a uh, 1,800. Then the height is uh, from year to year. Is, uh, we are told that it's 30, 35 minutes. So you have 35 minutes as the height. So this plus this will give us 4,020. So we have a uh, half times this times 35. That should give us uh, 70,350 meters. But we have to take it to kilometers. And that's what we did not do. We did not see this. We have to take it to the kilometers. So how many meters make one kilometers? That is 1,000 meters make one kilometer. So you can divide this one by 1,000 to give us it to give us the distance in kilometer, and that should be 70.350 uh, kilometers. So we have it. So the distance will be 70.35 kilometers as the distance covered by the car. <coughs> now to find the average speed of the car, the average speed of the car is uh, we are not we sorry. Okay, we have to find the average speed of the car. 
not acceleration sorry okay you have to find average speed of the car is there average speed of the car is the total distance covered by the car divided by total time taken so average speed is total distance covered uh, covered by the car divided by the total time taken so the total uh, sp to total the total uh, distance covered by the uh, the car is uh, seventy thousand three hundred and fifty meters divided by the total time taken from year to year is a uh, thirty seven minutes thirty seven minutes to me uh, to to uh, to seconds will give us a uh, two thousand two hundred twenty seconds. So this divided by the will give us a thirty one point six nine meter per seconds. So and uh, that should be the average speed. Then, uh, if you have to, you have to find the next one: acceleration and and retardation. Acceleration and is uh, retardation. So acceleration is the velocity divided by time. So we can use the velocity here and the time taken here. So we know that the velocity is a uh, thirty-five meter per second divided by. Uh, the time taken is a uh, four time for you to accelerate to that level. So four times sixty will give us a uh, uh, two hundred and forty. So divide uh, three six thirty five divided by that will give us zero point four one four six meter per second squared as the acceleration. Then retardation will be from year to year. You started retardating from year to year, and that should also be the negative. Neg that will be negative acceleration minus v over t that should be 35 divided by from year to year you cover how many uh, how many many how many many did you cover from year to year you said 30 minutes is that retarded it's already retarding uh it retarded for 30 minutes so that should give us 30 times 60 so you have a minus 0 0.19 meter per second squared for retardation as well then for the last one we have to find the time taken to reach c which is halfway between a and b so if you look at the diagram, there's another point C, which is the halfway of B and D, uh, half or halfway of A and B. So there's another point here. So you can draw another line here. So we have another another parallelogram to deal with. So so this point is point C, and uh, we don't know from year to year at all. We don't know. So although we are told that it is halfway of uh, a b so now what can we do if you say this place is b is c now as you have been told then we can call from year to year x <coughs> since we don't know from year to year we don't know what is this so from year to year you can call it x that means from year to year also will be x now from there what can we do we know that distance of course this is another parallel another tra trapezium another trapezium is here now so we know that distance covered by that trapezium will be half of this side plus from year to year which should be 4 plus x multiplied by the height which is at 35 do we understand what i've done here we are looking for the area of this trapezium which is the distance cover are we there so if you know the distance cover we can find the and uh, if you know the distance cover uh sorry uh -huh, we know the distance cover because we are told that the distance cover is a uh, halfway so then you can find the value of our hex when you know the value of our hex, you can find the time when you know the time you can have uh, so you can find our s and when you know the x you can find our time i said the distance here is a uh, the distance of this uh parallelogram is, this is a parallelogram the distance is the same thing as the area of this uh, trapezium so we have this time to be because of one over two into the addition of the two parallel side of the trapezium which is s plus from here to here is 4 and from here to here is s so s plus 4 plus x multiplied by the height which is 35 so the distance we are told that the distance uh the distance is a uh, halfway the uh, time taken to reach c which is the halfway between a and b so the distance uh, we can the distance from a to b is a uh, 7350 so half of it will be 2 divided by 2 rather equals to this so we have s plus that will give us 2s plus 4 multiplied by 30 35 and our 4 times uh, 4 
which is in minute times uh, 60 will give us uh, 240 in seconds so this divided by 2 will give us uh, what am I say okay two, um, this um, if we multiply through by 2 we have a uh, 70,350 equals to uh, 2 s plus 240 multiplied by 35 you can divide both sides by 35 we have a uh, divided one by 35 that's 2010 equals to 2s plus 240 equal to light times you have 2s equals to 2010 minus 240 that should give us 1770 divide both sides by 2 that should give us uh, s to be 885 se seconds so our s is 885 seconds so that means from here to here is 885 so that means the total time taken to from year to year what would that be that should be from year to year which is four meter plus from year to year that should be x so that should give us a four meter plus eight eight five which is our x and our four meter uh, that's a four meter four minutes rather from here to year is four minutes plus from year to year which is x so that will be four minutes then four minutes or seconds that give us 240 plus 885 that give us 1215 seconds as the time taken to get to reach c so that's the solution for question number 13 also question number 14 is from uh, probability it's from probability you are told that uh, if your coin is tossed four times calculate the probability of obtaining at least one tail and equal number of heads and tail now there are ways of solving this kind of question and because we need to get the 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 sample space for throwing for um, for throwing a fear of coin four times so we can use your tray method the tray drawing the tray but there are other ways in which you can do this as well now we can use the binomial expansion way to get the the combination of uh, ways when you throw four uh, when you throw a coin four times and uh, how do we do that you know when you throw a coin in the coin we have a head, head or tail then a plus tail then raised to power four why are we having raised to power four because it is tossed it was tossed four times but if you now expand this now we have this you can use binomial expansion to expand this or you can use pascal triangle anyone you want to use but yeah I use binomial expansion to expand this so we have uh, h raised to the power of, uh, sorry four combination zero then h raised to the power of four t raised to the power of zero that's the first attraction plus c uh, four combination one remove one from the power of h that gives us three then t carry power of one next one will be c combination two, uh, four combination two remove one from the power here you have h raised to the power of two Add one to this is for t raised to power two. Next one will be c combination three. Remove one from the power here h raised to, to power one. Add one to the power of t t raised to power three plus four combination four h raised to power zero t raised to power four. And then from there, if you simplify that, this will give us one. This will give us one. That means h raised to power four plus four combination one is four. Then h raised to power three t plus c combination um, four combination two is six <coughs> then h raised to power two t raised to power two plus four combination three is a uh, four then you have h raised to power one t raised to power three four combination four is one h raised to power zero is one then we are left with t raised to power four so when you expand this you have this and then uh, you can now get from this now whatever we have to find we can get it Knowing that the probability of head in when you throw a coin is half, and probability of tail when you throw a coin is also, is also half, then probably say that at least one tail is at least one tail. So in this, there's no tail in this, at least one tail. So that means it could be one tail or more than one tail. So in this, there's one tail here. So we are going to use this. There's at least one tail here. There's at least one tail here. There's at least one. So. The, that means you are using this uh, sample space to find at least one tail. So that means you have a four h raised to power three t plus six h squared t squared plus four h t cube plus t raised to power four. Probability of head is one over two. Probability of tail is one over two. Substitute so that here. You have six into one over two cube. 
multiply by 1 over 2 which is our t plus 6 multiply by 1 over 2 squared multiply 1 over 2 squared plus 4 multiply by 1 over 2 multiply by 1 over 2 cube plus 1 over 2 raised to the power 4 that's what you're having here to simplify that for that we have 4 times 1 over 8 times 1 over 2 then from there we are having 1 over 2 square and 1 over 4 then 1 over 2 square so give us 1 over 4 so we have 6 times 1 over 4 times 1 over 4 then we are having 1 over 2 cube then uh 1 over 2 cube like 1 over 8 times 1 over 2 times 1 over 4 yeah then 1 over 4 1 over 2 raised to power 4 is 1 over 16 then from there something can go 4 can go in 8 you have 1 over 2 times 1 over 2 1 over 4 also 2 can go in uh, 6 3 in 4 2 that will be 2 over 8 also 4 can go in 4 yeah that will be 2 2 times 2 give us 1 over 4 then 1 over 16 then you can find the LCM here we have this then if you simplify this you have 15 over 16 to be equal to 0 0.937 then the next one we have to find the probability at least uh to, to find probability of obtaining an equal number of head and tail an equal number of head and tail if you look at the possible uh, possible uh, outcomes here we have the same number of head and tail that should be two heads two tail that's when we have the possible number of uh, head and tail so equal number of head and tail rather so we have six into uh, 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 h2 uh, h2 h, h squared then t squared as well so we have it to be 6 into half squared half squared then that should give us c into 1 over 4 times 1 over 4 and if you two can go here oh sorry uh -huh. or six that's if you multiply that is 6 over 16 and that give us 0 0.375 <coughs> sorry for that question number 15 is from game theory is from gate theory and then the game theory we are given that uh, given that given the pair of matrix of player a and b in a game to be this two by two matrix we have to find the mass uh, mass meaning value of the game and the minimum minimum of the value of the game main strategy of the player a and b value of the game so how do we do this this is the the matrix given to us so from the row, we can find the mass a, uh, mini mass a, and the from the from the row rather we can find the max mini, and from the column we can find the mini max. So from the row, what do we need? You can find the mass mini. That is, you find the maximum of the minimum. So from the row, follow find the minimum. The minimum here is three. The row here also uh, in the second row, the minimum here is one. So we now find the maximum of the minimum. You know that in the first in the row here we have uh, the minimum here is three comma one, is three and one. Then we have to find the maximum of this uh, row of three one. That's the maximum here is what three. So that means the maximum meaning of the game is a uh, three. Also from the column we can find the minimax. Minimax that's min minimum of the maximum. Minimum of the maximum of the uh, of the column. So. From the column, find the maximum of the column here. This is five. The maximum of the column here is four. So the minimum of the maximum here is be the minimum of this uh, five comma four is a uh, four. So that means the minimum is four. The maximum is uh, three. Then add it being our our maximum is equals to the minimum. That should be that should like giving us the value of the game, and uh, that one, that one will have a a pure strategy or we call it a saddle point so but you can see that uh, the minimum as mini and the minimum are not equal they are different values so that means this one will not have a pure strategy it does not have a saddle point so it has a, mi a miss strategy we have a miss strategy for this one and that's what they have to find we have to find the miss strategy of player a and b how do we find the miss uh, strategy you need to forget the 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 oddment for player B and player A. For player A, how do you find the oddment? The oddment should be of our player A using this row should be 
five minus one that is the the modulus of the change of the four second row so the modulus of five minus one will give us a uh, five minus one is four the modulus of four is c4 then the for for the for this as well the odd man for this second row that will be this minus this as well for the, that will be the, the different of the uh, the first row that will be three minus four that give us a minus one the modulus is one odd man for the column as well that means for this column we have a uh, four minus one that will give us a uh, modulus of four minus one that give us uh, four minus one is three of three is three then for this column as well you have three minus five that should give us three minus five that give us a minus two uh, modulus of minus two is uh two therefore the the strategy for uh what's it called the mean strategy for player a that should be a one we are give us a f this four divided by four plus one that give us five so you have four over five then for eight two that the we uh player a2 now we have uh, with this one divided by four plus one again that give us one over five then for player b the strategy for player b will be b1 that will give us a uh, three divided by th two plus uh three plus two that should give us five three over five then for b2 that give us a uh, two divided by three plus two again that give us a uh, two over five therefore be the mean strategy for player a who is Four over five comma one over five. Then the uh, for player B that will be three over five comma two over five. Do we understand that? Then we have to find the value of the game. The value of the game is uh, we have the three multiplied by the we have the three multiplied by one. Are we there? Plus five multiply uh, this, plus this five this five here multiplied by the four do we understand that so i'm using this row with this so three multiplied by this one are we there then plus five multiplied by the four divided by four plus one so that should give us a uh, three times one is three plus 5 that will be 20 over 5 that equals 23 over 5 that give us 4 number 3 over 5 as the value of the game so then question number 15b is from the uh, question number 50b is from the distrib uh, probability distribution follow me for that for taking time probability distribution and here you are working on the nominal distribution i saw the nominal normal distribution order you are told that if the score of 5000 students follow a normal distribution with a mean to be 72 and the variance to be 25 determine the number of students who obtain score between 80 and 84. so this is question is part of the question number 15 this is question number 15 b and it's from the probability distribution and we are talking on normal distribution here so we have to find the probability between 80 and uh, 84 and uh, we are giving the mean to be 72 and the standard deviation is uh, uh, we are giving the variance rather 25 from the variance you can get the standard deviation to be square root of the variance that will give us 5 and uh, we need to standardize these numbers we need to find the standard we need to standardize 80 and 84 and so to standardize this number we have the, the z equals to x which is the number minus the mean divided by the standard deviation so for this now we have a z1 to be 80 minus 72 which is the mean over the variance uh, standard deviation which is 5 that gives us 1.6 we standardize the second one this 84 that should give us a z2 equals to 84 minus 72 over 5 equals to 2.4 then the probability of this now is same thing as the probability of z1 less than equal to z less than equal to z2 and as z1 is a 1.6 less than equal to z less than equal to 2.4 then we need to now draw the 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 diagram to represent this and this is this and uh, from me this is positive side this is negative side and our values for the two uh, the two z uh, the dz 
is positive this one is also positive 1.6 and 2.4 so that means 1 point from 0 1.6 uh, is here and 2.4 is here so you are looking for the the probability from year to year so then that should be that means you need to find the uh the uh, the chart there's a chart for distri normal distribution chart there's a normal distribution chart from that uh, normal distribution chart you need to get your the value of your 1.6 so 1.6 if you look at the get of four figure table there's a normal distribution chart then from that chart you can get the value of your the standard value of uh, 1.6 that should give us a z uh, uh 0 0.4452 and uh, the uh, standard value of uh, 2.4 is 0 0.4918 and how are we subtracting because they are in the same axis they are in the same axis this and this and the same axis so rdb this one is in this axis this one is in this axis. so we need to we will, sub, we will add them together but we are in same in the same positive uh, positive size so we need to subtract so the value of this one is this the value of this one is uh, this so you subtract and that should give us 0 0.0466 as the the number of students, uh, the probability of the student uh, between the score between 80 and 84. So that is the end of the the our discussion on the NECO 2023 for the mathematics, uh, the theory uh, part. And I believe you have learned uh, one or two things from this video where we made mistake, I've corrected it. And uh, please, if you like the video, please click on uh, on the like button. And if you are yet to subscribe to this channel, please click on the subscribe button right now. And uh, so that uh, you will be notified whenever I post information on this platform, please share this video with the student out there who need this resource materials. Comment in the comment section to help us improve on this video. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you and God bless you.